Hey, what's up everybody? Good morning. Uh, it is 8.03 in the morning. I am up making videos. We're going to talk about SLA printing on Prusa Slicer. So what do we have here? We have our Mark III setup. This isn't going to work. We need to switch over to the SLA setup, which is super simple. We're going to jump over the right hand corner here and we're going to look at all our little profiles tabs. And we're going to go to the printer profiles. We need to get off this crazy Mark 3S because that's way too large of a build surface for our SL1 printer. And we're going to choose, it looks like it's putting the Prusa SL1 first. If it's different, you know, look around. If you don't have them, you can head over to Config Configuration Assistant and you can add uh, the Prusa SL1. So make sure you do that if you're not seeing it. So original Prusa SL1, we will click on that and it'll take a second and boom, we have the build plate of the SL1. That looks super cool. Uh, real life scale, which is always nice. So that way when you're setting this thing up, you have a really good idea how big your mini is going to be. And we need a mini. So I print a lot of D&D stuff. I play D&D. I am the DM uh, for our group. And it's time to add some more enemies to the day. And thankfully, Photos Mint uh, uploaded onto my mini factory an amazing spectator mini. So let's go ahead and go to here and spectator miniature and drop in the spectator mini. So the Spectator Mini is gorgeous. And let's go ahead and rotate this so everyone can see it. So we're going to go to our little rotatey toolie here. And then we're going to spin this thing around. Boom. And we're going to zoom in. That is an awesome Mini. So this is going to look really good on the board. He even included the base. So I'll print that later. I won't make you uh, suffer through any more setup. Uh, plus this Mini is way cooler than the base. I mean, this is much more fun for us to uh, play with. So what are we going to do? Well, first thing when you're setting up SL1 print or anything that's SLA, you know, printable, you need to make sure that you're orienting it in a, in a way that you're not going to take away the details in the most looked at area, which I consider the front. Uh, so we're going to put a lot of the supports on the back and you could print it this way, you know, straight on its back, use some supports and a pad. Uh, and again, we're using technical terms here. There, a pad would be a large block that connects to the bed. And then from the bed, or I guess the build plate's not really a bed. <clears throat> the from the from the pad to the mini will be the uh, supports, and uh, that would work. Um, I prefer not to slice things completely straight, um, only for the sheer fact that then the layers become very visible. You know, and the, the eyeball detail. You're going to get some weird artifacting, even though the Prusa SL1 does have anti-aliasing it looks a lot better than my photon or other other slicers or other uh, sl1 printers sla style printers um you know it you're gonna want to angle things it just makes the print look a little bit better and there's a rule of like you know turn it at a 45 degree angle and all this stuff so what i like to do is just get a general orientation set up so from this general orientation here, we're going to just turn it. So let's hit the number five and that'll get us the side view. Click on our mini and we'll use the rotate tool again, which is over here on the left hand side. We'll grab the little toggle dial thingy here and we'll turn them a little bit. Basically, I want to get it in a way where the tongue is vertical. Uh, we're not going to need to support any of this. This is actually all pretty good. So all our supports will be looks like they'll be pretty good. We won't need anything crazy. And we'll stop right there and unclick. So this is the general orientation we're going to print. Now this is going to extend a little bit higher off the build plate, which is good. And uh, let's see here. Man, that's going to be such a cool model. So let's go back to the side view. And I think I'm good because remember, we're slicing things at a thin angle this way. So we need to make sure that our slices and everything aren't too thin. So I use the auto supports first. And here's a fun thing. There are full manual custom supports for the SL1 or any resin printer in Prusa Slicer. So from here, let's grab our mini and we're going to go ahead and start rotating. And we're going to do a little bit of rotation action. Basically, what I'm going to look for is to get the tongue to be near vertical. So we're going to grab our little doohickey here. I forget what they call those. And we'll twist. And there we go. So that's about as vertical as I need it to be. Everything else looks great. I'm going to unclick that, take a look, and I think that will work just fine and dandy. So, we do have full custom supports in the Prusa Slicer for SLA printing. So let's click on our mini again, 
And we'll click on the last little toggle here, which ends up being the supports menu. And once that's going, we hit auto generate points. And again, I like to let it auto generate because from there I can then manually add and remove. And it's going to do some weird things. I think it's going to put a random support here. And there's one on the other side of the tongue that just doesn't need to be there. Um, oh, you know what? Yeah, there's still that random one underneath the tongue that doesn't need to be there. So let's go ahead and go to the manual editing. So the exact same SLA support points or button L, uh, hit manual editing. And it brings up the points themselves. So you can go in there, like for the tongue one right here, all you have to do is highlight it and you'll see it changes to this like turquoise bluish color. Uh, you will right click and they'll go away. So any supports you don't want, just right click them away. Uh, though that one looks like about the only one I don't care about. So let's start adding them. So we're gonna add another one in here and another one here. And again, I will be a little heavy handed uh, because you know, once again, I will state that a print that is successful matters more than a print that does not and ends up being soup. So uh, do not uh, do not think I always use this many supports. And also, you don't have to use this many supports. It's just me. I am a crazy person, and I want to make sure that you have successful prints. So I'll show you the heavy-handed approach for now. And then once uh, you know you get used to your printer and you realize what you can don't need to uh, support in your uh, your own prints, you can then be less heavy handed. So for now, we're being a little bit, um, you know, scared of our, of our 3D printing in SLA world. So we'll just make sure all these little details are well supported. And that, I believe, is pretty darn good. We got these little elbows for the eyes, we got the horns, uh, maybe that little horn needs one too, right there and right there. Everything looks like it's going to be pretty darn well supported. So let's let's take a look at this, make sure. Yep, that looks great. So from here, once we're done, we just have to go to apply changes. And now it's going to sit here and use its little math magic, and it's going to place our supports just like it showed. And there we go. So let's unclick this. We don't need that. And we'll unclick away so we can look at just the supports. And it is doing exactly what it needs to. And again, do a double check. Because um, remember, the uh, what it's doing, eh, right there, there's the view. When we're, when we're slicing like this, we're using giant layers. So if I look at the layers tab, again, this is the fun part about these resin printers. And just like the SL1 and the Photon and, um, oh, the the Frozen, Frozen, Frozone, uh it prints the entire layer at one time. So that's really cool because I can print eight of these on the bed at one time without having any issues. Uh, it all takes the same amount of time. I think, yeah, this takes two hours and 10 minutes to print one. So if I print eight of these on the bed, it takes two hours and 10 minutes to print all eight of them. Uh, but that also means the layers are large. And if we scroll down, we have just to make sure nothing is hanging in air too much. So I just kind of you know take one last peek, make sure there's nothing too goofy. And this looks perfectly safe and fine. There's not going to be any issues with this. Uh, and then for those of you that need a nice, easy way of removing supports that don't leave too many marks, I like to remove the supports before I cure the mini. So I'll take the mini out. I will get some warm distilled water. Uh, usually just, you know, you don't want hot because that could distort the resin. But just, you know, hotter than, uh, hotter than tepid, cooler than hot, uh, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, and then the supports will just literally just flake off. You can just run your finger through and all the supports will pop off. Uh, and then once you get there, I like to do just a little bit of sanding before I cure it because there'll be little pock marks left from where the supports are embedded. Uh, and then the only other thing that uh, I do then is I like to cure underwater. It does a better job at curing. But uh, yeah, you don't have to do all those things. But that's just how I do it. I like to make sure that, uh, again, this looks, this looks way heavy handed in supports. It's a tiny mini. It doesn't really need this many supports, but uh, you know, for those of you out there just starting out, uh, I like to again. I'll suggest to you all that a successful print is better than not. Uh, and the only other thing I like to do, and this is a cool feature in Prusa Slicer, is let's see here. Uh, yep, there it is. Button three is my front view. So this is the pad, and to get a tool under the pad is always a little bit difficult. But they added a setting for us. So if we go to print settings. And then we go to pad and we change the wall degree. I like to change it to about 60 degrees. 
And that just changed the slope of the pad. So we're gonna go to the platter, hit slice again, and that little pad edge will have a little bit of a, yeah, there we go. So we'll have a little area for our tool to get under so it's easier to pry up, because it will stick really well to the build plate. Uh, so just, you know, add that little feature. Other than that, the stock settings are great. It works perfect with the fun to do, uh, even with a little mix of Flex 100. So there you go. I hope this helps everybody out in their little adventures in uh, using the SLA, uh, you know, uh, you know, settings in uh, Prusa Slicer. So from here, uh, again, just hit uh, export and uh, put it on the memory card or send it over USB Wi-Fi. Not USB Wi-Fi. Send it over Ethernet Wi-Fi to your uh, uh, Prusa SL1, and you can start printing this bad boy. So... Yeah, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Again, this is just a rudimentary, you know, get it set up, get it printing. It'll succeed with all these crazy supports. Um, and then you'll have a really nice uh, spectator mini. And I'll put a link to the description to uh, the My Mini Factory link for Fotus's uh, spectator mini because I bet you want to add this to your D&D little group battle. So uh, stay tuned for more SLA videos and uh, other general Prusa Slicer videos. So... Thanks again for watching, and we will see you again very soon.